it says in chapter uh, 1 Peter 4, 7, so that was a kind of commissioning, and that was uh, a strong, strong, strong service, strong word. But the end of all things is at hand. I think that's becoming more apparent to all of us. I feel we are in the last days of the last days. Things are really happening. You know, we may see um, some levels of war breaking out more than just rhetoric but real intensity, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, I just know there's something that's really started that God is setting in motion. I, it's been for four years growing in my spirit. But the first thing he says, the end of all things is at hand. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. That's why we're committing every Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to pray in the sanctuary. Fast and pray every Wednesday. We're one month, we're, excuse me, half a year into this. And then at 6 o'clock, we take the service. It was one that we would plan and have a direction and come in expectant to teach or minister. Now we're saying we're here to report what God did during the day of prayer and to impart what we received and to multiply the miracle. And that's, that's becoming a super favorite time for me, both the prayer and the, and the preparation. So he says, be serious, watchful in your prayers, and above all, of all have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin. We will not come into our destiny of maturity in Christ by becoming people who do not sin. We will be messy, family, struggling, learning to love, living, living out, discovering, thinking God told me to do this, realize. He might not have because it sure didn't turn out to be anything looking like God. And we're just going to live. If we're alive, we're going to be messy. So love covers the mess. The love gives room for people to discover what that meant and how do I do that and how do I find my freedom and how do I individuate and who am I. And it gives a lot of room. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Probably... Therein is the level of patience. We have to kind of go, I'm okay, I'm covering you with love, but can you hurry up? And it's like marriage. And I, I love you and I, I'm forgiving you, but how many days do we have to do this? Seven days? Seven times seven? <laughs> so hospitality is making room for people, but without grumbling. So that's the bummer, isn't it? You know, Cammie and I, we, we had grandkids throughout the week uh, we had a puppy, and by the end of the week, <laughs> I failed the whole test. Uh, I was just so in the flesh, just so frustrated, God. just more than I had room for. And so in a fashion, I, <clears throat> I missed the whole hospitality opportunity because I just went into grumbling. Does that make sense? How that is? That's just what happened. So I confess my sin. Now pray for me, then I could be healed. <clears throat> <clears throat> so... As each one has received a gift. Now, everyone in this room, we all carry gifts, grace. That's what the word gift means, the grace of the Lord. Something uniquely, not just carrying from our, in our outer man, our flesh, and our soul, but that which the Spirit has given, Jesus gave at the ascension. And it says, each one has received a gift. Minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we're, we come anticipating sometimes we're ready sometimes we have we have to just respond but let we we're expecting to we're going to release the, the gift that God's given me I want to release that gift to you if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of God and if anyone ministers or serves let him do it as with the ability that God supplies so in the speaking or in the doing God says let it be from me let it come from my words and my resource, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong all the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Everything we do, we can do in Christ, and doing it in Christ, then God receives the glory, and whether it seems like we just said, you know, made it, made it, made it out of, we went out of our way to say hello, we greet someone, we spend more time with someone, we invite them over for lunch, we say, hey, you know, we're going to go to, off to a, an event, would you like to join us? 
have lunch together, sit with someone. All of that just starts to release the glory of God because that's the, how we are to receive one another as Jesus received us into the glory of God. There's no kind of get in there on your way, but it's immediately, you're, you're here, you're part of our family. That's why all of our coming back in and intent for discipleship is so that we could uh, move in a move where we are all growing up into him who is the head, and from him the head, we joints and ligaments start supplying by each of us doing our part, and the causes a, a, where the body of the Lord Jesus starts to grow up inside of love. Love just starts abounding. So the key of all of everything, love, and, and stay engaged in love, and have hearts of love. And then when you're having a hard day like I had on Friday, then confess your sin and, and cry out to God. Say, Lord, I need a fresh wind of newness. I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've ran out of myself, so I've got to run back into you. And I've got to resource who you are and how much you love me. So I can love as you love me, then I can love like you love me. And so it's why prayer is the first thing. Because <laughs> it's, the end is coming. You've got to get serious and intentional. That's the source. But then we've got to go from the prayer and we've got to go into the love and cover. And then from the love, we've got to know it's going to be an a, a intentional process. And hospitality will have to be cared for with a generosity instead of grudgingly. And then take what we have and give it away because if we give away what we have, God will multiply it and he will receive glory. So I want to take us to he, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. This is the, the hard part about this, and I shared a, a bunch with the men, is that we are born into this earth with a, uh, our flesh, and we are cognitive of the world we're in, and now we get born again from heaven above, and now we're supposed to learn the ways of heaven. And yet the ways of heaven are communicated by the Holy Spirit and truth of God's word. So it's unseen. Yet we still live in the seen world. And the seen world and the way the world works isn't now long, no longer the way we're to work or to be influenced or controlled by. We're supposed to gain our identity in Christ. We are to uh, come and behold him. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it speaks of the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the law. The law was the, the, came from Moses, was given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The law of the Spirit was given to us from Jesus on Pentecost. The law of, the, the law of death, the letter of the law, it kills. But the Spirit gives life. And the letter that kills leaves us in condemnation because you can't, if you've ever tried to dig out of a hole of sin by trying to be better the next day, pay up, make up, you realize it's, it kind of like just pulls you into this place of condemnation. There's no way. But the law of the spirit of life brings us into a place of resting in his righteousness. Then it began to talk about that there's a glory. Moses came down in such glory that his skin radiated didn't, it wasn't in, coming from within. It literally, like you know, a, a luminous watch, the, the glory of the Lord had now shone and up on his face, and it freaked out Israel. And he put a veil over so that he wouldn't, they wouldn't be afraid of this radiant skin that he had. Now, the glory of the new covenant of the Spirit is even more glorious, even more more glorious, and yet. Uh, today, for Israel and for many of us, if we go to the law to try to understand God, there's a veil. We can't see it. We, our hearts don't get it. We have a trouble sorting it out. But if we turn to Jesus, the veil's taken away. The veil is removed because, and I'm going to read from right there. Uh, verse 14, chapter 3. But the minds, their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. So correct, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, now 15. But even 
to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, there's so much hope. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. It is, it is truth that we can rest in and why we would turn to the Lord and move toward him in prayer is so that we can see. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's the song we just sang. The Lord is the Spirit. You see, Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty on high, but he's functionally available and, ex- and, and leading the church through the, his Spirit that what he received the promise of the Father and poured out upon us. That's why the covenant is the covenant of the Spirit. We, I, you would think, no, it's the law. No, it's the covenant of grace. No, it's the covenant of the Spirit because the new covenant is he puts his laws in our mind, writes them in our heart. He begins to say, I'm going to individually direct every member of my body to function fully in how I have saved them and brought them into their destiny and no one will have to go around and teach other you got to do it this way you got to do it that way because everyone's going to know me from the least to the greatest why because i'm going to know everyone by forgiving everyone i'll be merciful to their unrighteousness sin and lawless deeds i'll remember no more so we get to walk around love each other because we've all been forgiven way more than anyone knows Way more than we even know. So we love because we're forgiven. He who is forgiven much loves much. So we just get to enjoy this. So where the, Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, liberty. But we all, and here's this kind of, again, this, was, this is one place to understand the power of prayer and meditation. But we all, all of us, ye all, we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Now, the mirror in the New Testament is always referencing the Bible, the Word of God. And James gives us a great uh, expansion on that in chapter 1. So, in the Word of God, we can behold the glory of God, the glory of the Lord. And then, what we behold, a metamorphosis starts to take place, just like the caterpillar to a butterfly. We are brought into a, uh, it's kind of like, the the funny, the hard thing about transformation is it's not something mechanical, and it's not by reorganizing what you're doing. It's literally a, a caterpillar goes into chrysalis in a hardened, protected place that cannot get out, and nothing can get at it inside. And then what happens is it liquefies. Literally, the whole caterpillar body liquefies so that it can become the butterfly. So transformation, I don't know if you've ever felt like it, but I feel sometimes transformation feels like being put in a bottle and liquefying. You know, like, I I don't even know me anymore right now, but I kind of get an idea God's doing something. I remember what I saw of Jesus, but I can't have any idea how where I am right now is bringing me to be where you are. But that's the power of the glory transformation is that it means it's a metamorphosis. It's literally what we understand for the, 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 what we call the, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. It's better than being a tadpole to a toad. Frog, right? Lose a tail, get some legs, croak a little differently. No, we get to be transformed and we fly. So... We behold in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed to the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 1. Let let me just keep this going. Therefore, since we have this ministry, we, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. That's the beauty, that we are living in a place of receiving mercy constantly. Therefore, we're giving mercy continually. And God is doing a great thing with that young man. And Mama, we love you. We love you, Mama. We love you, Mama. Mm-hmm. Now, here's, here's this kind of disconnect. We have to let go of the caterpillar if we're going to become the butterfly. So, we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. 
but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's how we get to know one another, is by knowing each other. It's conscience. Conscience means co-perception. My perception that God also has of me. So it's that place of sincerity and honesty. And I'm not trying to pull up something on you because God sees what I'm doing. And I have to answer him in all things that I say or do. So I have to live an awareness, my conscience to be clean and clear before God. Therefore, you can, you, we, and we get, that is a, that's a discovery to know one another by a conscience. You have to be willing to let someone feel your conscience. And you have to be, begin to trust the conscience of someone more so than you do the appearance. When Saul came out of terrorism into his calling, the church wouldn't receive him because he had the week before been putting them into prison and having them executed. But Barnabas, who was a son of encouragement, could recognize that inside this man he had had a true transformation, salvation experience. That Jesus had appeared to him and the words that Jesus spoke indeed were authenticated inside him. And so Barnabas would come to the apostles and say, this is a genuine conversion. We need to receive him. That, that's that knowing. And we're going to learn that. We're going to be meeting people. They're going to come. That a week before, we're, we're heads strong on hell bringing death and destruction to people we love. And, and then all of a sudden, they're going to be met by the Lord Jesus. And they're going to be so turned and so converted that we will be, I'm not sure what to do with you. Can we maybe have you sit outside for six months so we make sure that you're really sincere with what you just said? No, it won't happen that way. We have to receive everybody to the glory of God. We have, to have, we have to have a discernment, but we have to have a recognition that, hey, God's doing a new thing. People are coming in. You were that yesterday, but you're this today, and this is what, who you are forever, and we're believing and we're receiving you. And how you look today doesn't matter because when you first get saved, you don't change your clothes. You change your heart. You know what I mean? And you have to learn new patterns, new habits, things that you were doing before. You, you know, that's where the body then begins to become a, a receiver and a welcomer, and a, and a blessing. So he says, but even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to, the, to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So this gospel of Jesus Christ, the glory of God in Christ, when seen and shining, causes a transformation. So he goes to the next verse and says, For we don't preach ourselves. We're not preaching a brand of Christianity and how to do life better and how to be church in America. We're not preaching us. We preach Christ, Messiah, Jesus, the Lord. Christ, Messiah, Jesus, the Lord. Without the head, we're dead. We must have the head and firmly submit to the head. And the head then tells all of those parts of the body to respond like in the like way and then the growth happens. So we preach Christ, Messiah, Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, the bond servants, your bond servants, your bond servants for Jesus' sake. So we're here to serve each other because we're not trying to get something from each other. We're trying to give something to each other to honor God and glorify Jesus. So then he says, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Light be. Who has shown in our hearts. So he's, that same command, that same directive, shown in our hearts to give light or illuminate the knowledge, which means experience the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So we, we begin to see that where Jesus is matters, who Jesus, and it determines who Jesus is for us today. He is seated at the right hand of majesty on high. He is be called a high priest. And he, his face is where the glory of God is radiating from. So when I, we go to pray, that's where we want to, we want to behold. Now, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not from us. So here's the paradox. 
We're not only in a transformation in a, in a chrysalis that God puts us into. We are carrying the very glory of God in the vessels that we were saved in. We're just pots. And if you're like me, you're a cracked pot. That's why his spirit leaks all the time. You've got to get filled up. He says, the excellence of the power may be of God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side. So if I'm carrying a treasure in me, but the treasure is not from me, that takes a load of responsibility off of me. I cannot produce God. But I, I carry the treasure. God has to produce God. God has to be God. Jesus has to be Jesus. And to make matters clear that it's not from us, otherwise if it's from us, it might be just gifting, charisma, intelligence, favor that we've been born into, and we're moving people from the flesh to the flesh instead of from the Holy the whole Spirit to have access. So God makes sure that when he wants to do something, he allows the cracked pots to be in less than perfect circumstances. We're hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Each one of these comparisons is that we're put into a position we would, we were, that the next step is to be crushed, but we're not. We are perplexed. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to get out of here. We feel like we're in a place we can't get from, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, being sought, chased, forced, but we're not forsaken. And we're struck down, but we're not destroyed. And always carrying in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Which is an interesting thought that we in our body will be carrying the effect of having to walk in a, a fallen world and, and, the, and in the betrayal like Jesus did. And we'll be in all those kinds of moments. But it's not for us to then succumb to it. Because God has a better plan. He says that the life of Jesus, the resurrection Zoe life, may be manifested in our body. See, we're going to be the miracles walking. People are going to say, how can you be so full of joy? Life must be working for you. And you'll say, well, actually, life is working because his name is Jesus. But my circumstances, I, you probably don't want to be there. But I don't need, I used to not want to be there, but I don't even care because now this is where our Jesus is. And he's just finding me. So the life that you're experiencing is the life that God's manifesting in my mortal body through the experience of struggle and trouble that I'm having to walk through because of the Jesus I said yes to. And so here we are in this kind of, it's, it's a paradox. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. So Jesus looks around and says, I've got a place that I really want to invade. I want to touch this area of life. I want, I want to touch these neighbors. I want to touch this business. I want to touch this group at school. And so he says, who am I going to send? Who can I place there? And he knows that while we're in this unreconciled, unsavory place, we're going to be under the effect of it. But he's counting on the fact that we're not going to react in the flesh and try to control the thing and make people do what they're supposed to do and put law on everything. He's counting on that we're going to have this connection and the light shining, the love flowing, the union with him, and we'll go, okay, uh, I'm going to ask for life to come instead of death. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to release forgiveness to everybody. I'm going to be forgiving everybody. If you're not forgiving everybody, then chances are you're not in the right place. Because life is not meant to work. It's meant to be redeemed. It's meant to step in where Christ starts to show up. So the people that we wish were out of our life, they're the ones God sent us to release us, to release the Christ in us that won't unlock except there's some conflict to which we then have to become desperate and say, it's not me. And I don't have that kind of patience and I don't have that kind of love and I am, I don't even know what to do, but... Go ahead, Jesus. Go ahead, Jesus. Go ahead. Have, your, have access. So his life begins to more manifest in our mortal flesh. So the death is working in us, but life in you. So the life, the product is we're in a set of circumstances we would rather be out of, but God decided he wanted to find us in these set of circumstances. Now that we're enjoying him, we're carrying something that the world needs. We're carrying peace in the midst of confusion. We're in joy in the midst of testing. We're in hope where nothing but despair should be resting. 
and that is eternal. And since we have the same spirit of faith, which is according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore we speak. So the, the, re, the, the dependency on a believer to spend time alone with God in the spirit, with the truth, to behold the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ is absolutely indispensable. And what's coming will be the requirement of our union with Christ to be maintained and, and, and enjoyed and, and experienced so that Christ can access the world when it starts to fall apart in a greater way is so that what happens is in the presence of him whom we believe, God calls things that don't exist as though they do. And so we hear our heart believes so therefore we speak that's why a good time with the Lord is you'll be declaring things in your prayer of who Christ is what Christ is doing of the love he has for others of the future he's going to do and you'll just be going and if you're not careful and you you, you won't be careful because God always casts care to the wind you'll get up going man hot dog this whole thing changed everything's different Everything's new. Every, I, I'm going to go look into this circum, set of circumstances that I'm, I'm overwhelmed in. I can't wait. I, I just run in over there because it's all new. Then you run all in there and nothing's changed. People are just as the way they were. The situation's just sitting the way it is. And you go, here, I hear, I hear you. My heart believes. I speak. There, it's still the same as it was the last time I left it. But this is the pattern of walking by faith. We believe, therefore we speak. Where do we believe? We believe in the presence of him. We come to faith in the spirit and in the word. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. So we know that... We're seeing the world. Can we, can we pray into it? She, I, I know how tired we both are. She said the war that's being provoked is from heaven. Heaven has decided inheritance is to be received for the son. Heaven is stepping into the earth. It's shaking. The desire of all nations is standing up. The, every authority is trembling. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. But that's not where it ends. It goes in Psalm 110 verse 2. The Lord will send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Then it goes even further and says that your people will be volunteers in the day of your power. So this intentional movement of heaven into the earth, Jesus as judge, as Lord, stepping in and dealing with nations. And there are, the rebellion of man has so increased exponentially in all levels that Jesus himself is stepping in and starting to say, we're going to deal with the powers behind. We're going to deal with the principalities and the powers and the spiritual wickedness and the heavenly places and the rulers of the darkness that are, that are sitting in those places of rulership. And the only one I'm going to use is my body. And I'm going to use my body anointed by my spirit living in truth. But I'm going to have to stick my body where they are so they can manifest Jesus Christ. So we then begin to say, okay, wherever I am, Christ is going to raise it up. He's going to release himself. He's going to bring something of himself to be seen in the midst of where I am. I don't want out. I want him in. Because I want him out from within. So my time of prayer isn't, isn't to change, although he's always talking about the new. He's always talking about the new. You, we're, we're longing for just a, I want to get to the other side of the month and have enough money to meet all my bills. And you go, Lord, help me there. Next thing God says, I'm going to increase you, and I'm going to cause an abundance to happen, and I'm going to bring in an inheritance that's going to be larger than anything you ever thought you would hold. And he starts talking in this large way, because God always fixes our gaze from the myopic, I'm, you know, poor me, to the big Jesus, to the glory of what's coming. So, to, so we're in this conflict He's believing, we're speaking, knowing he's going to raise up the Lord Jesus, going to raise us up with us. For all things are for your sake, that the grace having spread through 
many may cause thanksgiving to the glory of God. So that gift that we're carrying, it's growing up as we spend time with Jesus. It's, at, it's being surrendered to his unction, not to our function. And we're going, wow. Therefore, we do not lose heart. This is our exhortation. We don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing. Our outward man is our, our flesh and our soul. The outward one that we know, that's us. It's me. I know me. That's me. And I know my body isn't the same it was when it was 20. So it's perishing. It's on a decline. But the inward man, that's my spirit, my heart, my, my inward man. There's two of us sitting in the chair we're in. There's the one that's on the chair, and there's one inside of you that's on the chair. And the inward man is being renewed day by day. Again, circumstances may not change. In the presence, everything conforms and submits to God and who he is and what he's doing and what Jesus is doing. And there we live. And soon we want to spend more time here then we want to be here. And then what you learn is that this time is to know the secrets of God and his intention and his intercession and what he's doing. And you know you can walk back into the circumstances and go, you know, I know what God's doing. I know who God's going to change you into. I know who you are before you know who you are. But I'm not going to try to do it. I'm not going to try to control it. I don't even need to be afraid of it. We'll just let God deal with the circumstances as they unfold because I'm hearing life from the inside. I'm seeing it from the unseen. I'm hearing him speak from his presence and he's calling things that don't exist. Now, I'm choosing not to look here to see if God can do what he said. I'm choosing to listen to God till I'm convinced that what he says he can do. So therefore, I hold my confession of what God's doing was when I'm with him. And I, I, I just hold that place of confidence in God, knowing that when the resurrection point hits, they're coming alive. So our light affliction, which is but for a moment, what we're walking through, all of us, is just temporary. It's just for the moment. Is working for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. So you can look at that as a word study. It's all light affliction moment exceeding eternal weight of glory. We, at, while we do not look at the things which are seen. This is so hard. You see, again, I was born a living soul. I've been born again and become, being transformed into a life-giving spirit. I was born aware of my surroundings and gaining my identity within my surroundings. Now I'm born again and I'm gaining... I'm learning to be aware of the Spirit and His leading and truth and Heaven's jurisdiction and Heaven's rule. And I am learning to rest that that place is the place where I gain my life from. So I'm going through something I don't want to go through. All of us are, right? That's called your cross. You understand what the cross is? Not a stick. <laughs> it's not a you know, people get upset because we don't have the cross here. I, I, I haven't found the cross in the book of Revelation. I can't see it in heaven. If, you, if I was to do something to get us a vision for today in Christ, I'd put a big old hunkin' throne. A big old throne where God's seated and where grace abounds and victories are commanded and the voice of the Lord is spoken and intercession goes forward. And we'd get a vision of not an impaled man on a cross, which we were impaled with him, but we would know that he didn't, he's not on the cross anymore. He's not there. And he was made alive by the voice of the Lord saying, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Come forth out of the Adam, the last Adam, out of the living soul that you submitted yourself as the Son of God, the God's Son. Come in into a life-giving spirit. Come and be a, my son. Today I'm your father. And we were made alive at that same time. And when we, he was raised from the dead, we were raised from the dead. And when he was seated at the right hand of God, we were seated. So if we want to get a vision of where we are, we got to get a vision of the throne. 
Christ seated at the throne and all that that means and all that authority. So uh, seeing the unseen, unseen, that's what we just described, the unseen. It goes on and he says, we, these things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So to, to connect a vision really, really quick. Hebrews chapter uh, 10, I was worth uh, uh, some meditation. Meditation is taking scripture and chewing it, and savoring it, and pondering it, taking the time to follow the reference, look at other words, trying to ask yourself, what is this that he's saying? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean for me? What does that mean? What are, who are you? I'm going to go to chapter 9. I'll, I'll start next week on chapter 10. That's a better plan. Thank you, Father. That's the Spirit of the Lord. Chapter 9, verse... Uh, 23. Just five verses. Chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, 23. Therefore, it was necessary. Now we're talking about the unseen heavenly vision. What we were not even aware of was taking place. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these. Speaking of blood of bulls and goats and lambs. But the heavenly things. See, Moses got a, a vision of a tabernacle from a real tabernacle that's in heaven. A heavenly tabernacle, a seat of worship, the holiness of God. He said, it was necessary that the copies of these things in heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with a better sacrifice than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands. He never, on his earth walk, ever went into the holy of holies. He never went into that place because that wasn't what he was there for. He was there to be the sacrifice while on the planet to then assume, not by his own choice, but by the, by the oath of God to say, I now swear to you, you are Melchizedek, you are my high priest of righteousness. So he didn't go into the holy place made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Now, put your thinking caps on with me. We're going to talk about the two appearings, and we're going to talk about the unseen appearing that is the most important right now. The two appearings, and then the unseen appearing. This is the unseen appearing. It means to appear. It's a different Greek word. It means to exhibit in person or disclose with words. So sometimes the Spirit gives me images and vision. Sometimes the Bible does it all for me. But I see him there. He's there. He's appearing. What does it mean? He's appearing in the face of God over us. So my confidence in the presence to be received, to worship, to hear, to listen, to believe, to dare to believe and dare to speak is because Jesus is standing in the face of God over me. And when God sees me, he sees Jesus. And when he sees Jesus, he sees me. He sees the butterfly even when I'm still a caterpillar. He sees the transformation before because the glory of God is in the face of Jesus and Jesus is beaming as the intercessor. That means he's disclosing who he is to, who I, to me from glory to glory with words. Words. Why? It's not about, I believe in Jesus, I'm a part of this body and I'm going to live this kind of life. Uh, plan and I'm going to be a good person and a great citizen. Those are all wonderful things, but that's the fruit of, of just of living, living in union and fellowship with God. But the, the, the work is, who are you, Lord? Who, who, you're, 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 you're standing in the presence. You're, you're, it's made clear. This resurrected, glorified man is seated at the right hand of majesty. He's in the presence of God over me, over me, over me, for me. Then it says, not that he should offer himself often as, a high, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. This is the atonement. This is what we're going to start peering towards so we might see clearly. 
So the high priest had to go in every year. He said, no, he didn't do it. Because then he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of ages, he has appeared. This is the first appearing that we're familiar with. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So when he appeared on into the planet at the end of age, was that this one sacrifice of himself, he would deal with all sin, past, present, and future, forever, one offering for all time, by giving himself. That word is, it's apparent. It's, it's rendered apparent. It is historically true that Jesus Christ died on a cross. It's, it's substantiated in the Roman history, in Jewish history, in biblical history. He died, he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, and so he died. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait. Now this is, this is the part. This is the who we are supposed to. This is, this is where all the grace is. This is where I, Holy Spirit's all over this. Because this is now our job. To be eagerly waiting. To be anticipating. To, to oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for the appearing of the Lord. He's coming. And he's not just coming in the one day in the clouds. But he's coming every day I go to pray. He comes into my room where I'm seated. And it begins to reveal. As I look, turn to him, the veil comes off my heart. I begin to see what I hadn't see, seen. Or hear again what I heard but I had forgotten. Ah, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for the fullness of Jesus to find expression within me. And so for us who are eagerly waiting for him, he's going to appear a second time. That's the second appearance. This one is the word appear means to gaze with eyes wide open at something extraordinarily beautiful and powerful and wonderful. While we're, remember, we're still in this light affliction, but for a moment. We're still stuck in places we don't want to live. We're still having to show up at a job that's more of a cross than it is a job. We're living in through stuff. We're there, but, 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 we're not, we're not, Dot, we're not, we're, we're there on assignment because God put us there. We don't try to get out of where we are. We just try to let know God there. But wow, that's happening. Meanwhile, I'm gazing and, and anticipating and I'm experiencing being in the presence of God, in the face of God in Christ. See, the, the appearing of Christ in heaven is the one appearing that we're supposed to be seeking to enter into. The first appearing to take, pay for sin done with. Second appearing, it's on its way. Meanwhile, we get to come in Christ. We get to approach God on the throne of grace through Christ. He's over us, and we begin to have this conversation of life because he's coming a second time. And when he comes the second time, there's no sin issues. There's none stuff. He's not going to go, oh, Steve, I gave you all that time. You still got that problem. No, the, the, by that time, it's this, the last torch burns it all up. Whatever I wasn't willing to deal with will just get fried. All those fleshly things that I built and I've been living in the confidence and I'm something, they'll go poof. Because his appearing is like, a, is, a, is like an oven. And everything that's been being tested and fire of afflictions and struggles and troubles. And every day I have to get up and go, God, I don't want to be nice. And he says, I don't either. <laughs> but come and be in me and then receive the fruit of me. And you'll find that you want to be nice. Because I am nice. I am a lover. I am a forgiver. I am a redeemer. Whoa. So here, here's the close. I asked the Lord when he brought me in that time, and I was thanking him today for the time he brought me sovereignly to have so much time in his presence from his vantage point, from the heavenly realm. And I was thanking him because it changed everything about how I saw things. And I was living in it for a supernatural sovereign time for five months. And I remember in the midst of that, because it was so sovereign, I could be talk to God about practical circumstances that he could give me his his vantage and I could understand why he would hold that vantage 
And it was one of those days, I was in the backyard, I was mowing the lawn, I think, and I was just, you know, thinking about all the little details of life and people that are, um, you know, currently praying or kids. I don't even remember the details, but I all of a sudden it dawned on me. I said, God, you're always joyful. You're always full of peace. There's always this assurance of the outcome. You have no, you don't have bad days. I said, how in the world can you do that? You have seven billion. I think we were at seven billion at that time. Seven billion children on the earth that you love each one and care for them and have a destiny for every one of them. And I, I'd imagine six billion aren't following you right now. So what do you do with the six billion? How do you keep yourself in joy? And I didn't even get a chance to get that question out of my mouth. He said, I believe in the redemption of my son. Whoa. See, he's confident something's changing in the midst of all our lives that we can't yet see that he sees in his son. And he sees his son, and he sees all of us in his son. And he's confident that he's going to move things in a rapid sound of his voice, of his spirit, of his words that are going to bring people radically out of wherever they are. And he can appear in glory and speak to a terrorist and say, you, you're going against the destiny I gave you. Get out of this crazy, stupid thinking and come back into the identity that I called you to be. You're not Saul the terrorist. You're Paul the apostle. That's going to happen. But meanwhile, right now, each of us get to practice that kind of conversion in our prayer time so that we can go. Lord, Lord, this is over here telling me this is what's going to happen. You told me that a while ago, but it, I need to hear more of this. Can you talk to me more? Can you show me more? Can you call me out into this place? Can you unveil? That's the appearing of Jesus now. That's the job of Jesus, is to appear in the face of God over us. To be an intercessor for us. To be a high priest that has positioned us in total acceptance. One man. We're not getting up to like 100% holiness and all of the church is perfect. That would go nuts. Because it's flesh. It's rules. It's touch not, taste not, handle not. No, we will be in 100% holiness because we will be 100% submitted to the holy man. We will be giving him the full access. We won't be trying to be him. We will receive him. Oh, beloved, let's stand up. We'll start at, Lord willing, then chapter 10, because it just opens such a big world up. Lord, you have been generous to this, your people, beautiful people. So many stories in this room, online. So many journeys that have been st started. Shipwrecks, yes, many. Confusion, struggles and troubles. Where do we go? How did we get here? What happened? And yet you see us all in Christ. And you believe in the redemption of your son, knowing that his blood the forgiveness of sins brings us into the riches of his grace that he makes to abound to every one of us in all wisdom and prudence making known to us the mystery of his will that in the fullness of time in the dispensation of the fullness of time you father will gather into one all in Christ in him Beloved, I'm going to ask you to do us to do a simple thing. Can we let go of yesterday and every day best? Wherever we've been, whatever's happened, whatever happened to us, whatever shouldn't have happened, whatever evil was done to us, can we let it go? We are no longer that caterpillar. We are more like the sun than we realize it. That's why life works from heaven, not from the earth anymore. Release. Let it go. I forgive. I forgive others, I forgive myself, I forgive how I got here, I let it go. Mm. 
having forgiven, having let go, can we reach forward? Can we reach forward to what lies ahead? To the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Cutting off the ties that bind us to this earth. Relationships that we are demanding to change in order for us to go forward. And just let go. And let the Holy Spirit pick us up into the un... The, the high calling, the high calling, the higher calling of God in Christ. The beautiful place that He has prepared for us. If you've never received Jesus, say right now, Jesus, I receive you in your glorified state. High and lifted up. I receive you seated on the throne. I receive you as Lord. I receive you as King. And again, I receive Jesus every day I wake up. I receive him again and again and again. So I have a union. If you've never received Holy Spirit, who, who is this glorious Lord, who brings us from glory to glory into transformation, who makes the Bible come alive because he sits and reads it to us as we meditate. Receive the Holy Spirit. Just say, Holy Spirit, I receive you. Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, tell him. I, I do that every day too. Jesus, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit to see you and hear you and know you. Oh, Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord, come. Come, oh, send him to change me, transform me. Let's begin as you start to sing and worship with freedom in the song. Look into heaven and see Jesus. Salvation is not a concept. Salvation is a man. All the benefits of salvation are not concepts. They're the glory of the man. We'll sing one more time. We're going to sing Jesus, Jesus, freedom song is here. Jesus, Jesus, freedom song is here. It's the glorious name of Jesus. Can we do it? Grab, receive, look, peer, gaze. He's appearing. Jesus, Jesus, freedom song. You are Father's freedom song over us. Jesus, Jesus. One more time, one more time. Jesus, oh bless you. Stretching out your hands to the side of you. Lord, we ask that the love that's in us, the gifts that are coming alive in us, the words that we're hearing from you speak, the, the capacity of care and service 
would now spread to one another to multiply and to grow up the body edifying itself in love to be for you father to receive glory in the church in Christ Jesus for all generations world without an end we bless the food we're about to enjoy all the hands that work so hard to set things up we bless the relationships that we are about to renew or friendships we're about to form we call Jubilee your family we are your family your body in Jubilee so we now declare we receive Christ in each other we receive one another to the glory of God like Christ has received us in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name everyone says Amen